right, we want to welcome everyone who's joining us by live stream this morning. Uh, we really appreciate y'all being here. Praise God. We'd love to see you in person. Uh, so if you are in the area, we invite you to come by personally so we can hug on you and love on you and, and just, uh, and then you can learn the word of God outside of your pajamas. Amen. Praise God. I don't mean nothing on. I mean, put regular clothes on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got to watch how that comes out, right? <laughs> Whoa. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, it's good to laugh. Laughter is healthy. That's right. Amen. Well, be turning in your Bibles to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And you may be saying, uh, Pastor, come on. How many times are we going to go to this same scripture? Till we get it. Till we get it. It's like a pastor who's, who preached the same message for an entire year. And, of course, the board of this denomination brought him in the office <laughs> and because they was a little bit concerned about him that he wasn't hearing anything from God. He was just preaching the same thing over and over and over again. So they asked him uh, <clears throat> why every service was the same message. He just, he didn't skip a beat. He said, the Lord instructed me to preach this message until you get it. So I'm telling you this morning, I'm telling everybody by live stream, the Lord is going to keep us <clears throat> teaching his word until we get it. Can I get an Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hallelujah. All right. So, what I want to continue teaching about this morning is faith. Right. How many of you know faith comes by hearing stuff over and over and over again? Yeah. See, it's not what we're hearing that we get, it's what we hear and do that we get. Faith without works is dead. So we're going to continue this morning talking about, and we was talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and then, we, of course, we had the, the, the Mother's Day gift by the ladies last week, praise God. But we, we're going to continue talking about faith and our words. In other words, faith and our confession. Talking about how important our confession really is. Not only the words we speak over our life, but also the words we speak in general. There's a scripture in the Bible that says we're even held accountable for the idle words that we speak. And we're going to learn what that really means. Amen? You see, it's important to understand that the words we speak are actually determining, listen to me, the course of our life. And of course, we've been teaching this for quite some time. Uh, how many of you have ever heard at least one message about Watching what you say. Yeah. Amen. If there, uh, if there isn't, uh, if this is not your first time at uh, Hill Country Cowboy Church, or you maybe were asleep on the day I preached those messages, you might want to go to our website and download those and listen to them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. And listen to those because they're going to help you. Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> what we all need to realize is we don't get what we hear. Tell your neighbor, you're not going to get what you hear. You're going to get what you do. Faith without what? Works. Faith without works is dead, being alone. So we're going to continue our series on faith uh, that we started Sunday before last. And one of the things I began teaching on is that there is a work. Everybody say work. There is a work to our faith. We have to put some work into it. And the number one way we work on our faith, if you don't remember, is through the words that we speak. So let's look at this again in Mark chapter 11. And I'm going to begin reading with verse number 12. It says, now the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry, talking about Jesus. He wanted a little snack. And seeing uh, from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to the tree if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, 
for it was not the season of figs. In response, Jesus said to it, now he's talking tree talk here now, guys. You got to get a hold of this. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And the disciples heard it. So Jesus is hungry. He sees afar off, he sees a tree that should have fruit on it. But when he gets closer, it has no fruit. Then we see Jesus speak to a tree. And notice he didn't cuss at it. The Bible says he cursed it with words. Now drop down to verse 20. He cursed it with his words. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. How many of you know Jesus took them by that tree for a reason? How many of you know Jesus has you in this church this morning for a reason? That every word that proceeds out of your pastor's mouth uh, that Jesus spoke or what's in this Bible is for your learning. It's not just for you to come in here and check the box off and say, well, we made it to church today. No, it's for you to learn something. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. amen. It says, uh, and then in verse 21, it says, And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. In other words, what you said, Master, actually happened. Now watch what Jesus, how Jesus responds in, in verse number 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Many margins, it may be in your margin as well, says have the faith of God. Amen? Or have the God kind of faith. Here's what I want you to get this morning. This is so important, guys. When Jesus spoke to that tree, he wasn't just speaking words. He was demonstrating how faith works. Get a hold of that. He was demonstrating how our faith will work in our lives as well. Amen. Hallelujah. That ought to get you excited. How many of you want to know how your faith is supposed to be working? How many of you want to just sit back and blame God every time bad, something bad happens? How many of you want to blame God when you don't get what you want or get what you need? When you think you're praying in faith and then all of a sudden then you never get it. And then you want to say something like, well, I guess God didn't want me to have that. No, there's a work to faith. And right now, this morning, you need to open your eyes, you need to open your ears, you need to open your heart, and you need to listen to what your pastor is about to say. He is demonstrating how faith works. James 2.17 says, thus also faith without works is dead. Because it's alone. You have to be working your faith. Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus speaking to the free, uh, fig tree, listen to me, was him putting his uh, faith in action or putting action to his faith. In other words, if I'm in faith about something, I'll just use me. Then my words, listen, my words ought to be active toward that situation. See, even being silent is in faith. You're not act activating your faith until you open your mouth and say something. And we need to all get a hold of that. Christians need to get a hold of that. Too many times, this is where believers really miss it. Uh, they get satisfied with just having faith. We know in Romans 12, 3, that we all have what? A measure of faith. You had enough faith to get saved. That's what you got when you got saved. You, had a, you got enough faith to get yourself into heaven. Every promise of God, listen to me now, every promise of God uh, is according to your faith. If you're, if you're living it and you're, and you're getting things from God, then you're doing something right. If you're, if you're not living it and you're not getting anything from God that you're asking for, then it's not God's fault. Well, that fell to the ground like a lead balloon. 
I said it's not God's fault. God is, can never go against his word. And Jesus Christ right here, and the Lord just showed me this too, guys. I'm telling you, I, my spirit started jumping for joy when I started getting this message from the Lord. There's too many times in my own life, I know the word, I can confess the word, then why don't I open my mouth and do it? Are you hearing me? Is anybody in here like that? You know the word. You know every time something adversely happens in your life or over your everyday life, you ought to be speaking God's word. You hear it enough. But how many of us are actually opening our mouth on a daily basis and claiming God's word over every area of our life? If we're not doing that, we haven't arrived, right? We just need to keep at it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Listen closely to what I'm about to you. If you and I are really in faith towards a particular situation, our words will be on that situation. And if our words are not on that situation, then we are not in faith. We have faith. That's not the question. The question is, are we working our faith? Are our words reflecting what we're believing God for? Amen. Brother, sister, Jesus demonstrated what faith uh, uh, to us, w what faith looks like that works. Excuse me. <clears throat> so we can't really say we're in faith about a situation in our lives if we're not saying anything about that situation. Amen. If I have, uh, uh, if I wake up and I have pain in my life, and I don't know about you, but I have done that before. Yeah, you know, I may be the only one in here. If I go to Miss Brenda and I say, man, baby, my back sure is hurting. Or my neck sure is hurting. Or this is hurting. Or that is hurting. Let me share something with you. The pain's not going to go away. So then you know what I do then? I'll go get some more Advil because that's where my faith is. But if I get up and I say, praise God, I thank you, Jesus, for my healing. I thank you that every uh, ligament in my neck and my back is healed in Jesus' name. I thank you that I'm uh, going to the, the doctor to get him to help me. And I, I've been to the chiropractor twice. Uh, so I'm really just talking about myself, guys, okay? I'm going to the doctor, Lord. I'm going to let him do his part, but I'm believing you for my healing. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for my healing. Notice I didn't mention one thing about how bad I hurt. Get a hold of this, guys. We need to watch our mouth. We're speaking our life into existence. Now, let me get back on my scripture. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus demonstrated what faith looks like. Many times what Christians do is if they come to church is they'll come to church and they'll hear the word of God. And they'll even say, wow, pastor, man, that was such a good message. But then they go on their own way and they don't see God's word manifesting in their life because they're hearing the word, but they're not being doers of it. Let me ask you a question. When Jesus walked up to that fig tree, did he have faith? Yes, he did. Did him having faith cause the tree to wither and die? Everybody say no. She's getting ahead of me. Did him just having faith? See, that's we got to listen. Just him having faith caused that tree to wither and die. No. Did he just stand there and say, I'm on the scene, the son of God, here I am, and I have faith. No. He had to say something. If I have faith, then faith should automatically be working for me in my life, right? See, that's another test. Say no. 
It don't automatically work. And that's where a lot of Christians are missing it. They'll say, well, I thought I had faith. Yeah, you do have faith. But you ain't opening your mouth and saying anything. Or when you do open your mouth, you're telling everybody how bad you feel. You're getting on Google and you're seeing how bad your disease is. You're, getting, you're, you're calling all your brothers and sisters and sharing your misery with them. Instead of speaking to your body. I know I'm preaching better than you're shouting. <clears throat> Just having faith is not automatic that things are going to work in your life. Faith does not work like that. When I hear, <clears throat> excuse me, when I hear people say that things just aren't working out, I begin asking, uh, I'll begin asking them, what are you saying about it? What are you saying about it? Is that you, Lord? <laughs> that wasn't a trumpet. I'll begin asking, what are you saying about it? Are you saying what you see? Are you saying what you think about it? Are you saying what you feel? Or are you speaking faith-filled words over that situation? Listen to me. If you're not speaking faith-filled words over your life and over your situations in your life, then you are not in faith. And let me add this. Having a mental assent of God's word is not enough. In other words, you can agree with God's word all day long. You can uh, also come in here and when I preach, you can shout amen. You can also say, praise God, I believe it all. I can preach on uh, 1 Peter 2.24 that says, by his stripes you were healed. And you can sit out there and shout amen and say, oh yeah, pastor, I agree with that. But then if I overhear you talking to your brothers and sisters and you're telling them about how bad you hurt, mm -hmm, got awful quiet in God's house. You know why? Because it sounds familiar. I'm up on your porch now. And I come up to you and I say, hey, brother, hey, sister. What about that 1 Peter 2.24? Oh, yeah, Pastor, I believe that 1 Peter 2.24, man. Amen. Praise God. They have a mental assent. But they never say, I'm healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for my healing. I've had people say, I know God's going to heal me. No, you're already healed. Amen. I know God's going to do this for me. I know God's going to do that. No, he's already done it all. Not going to do anything else. He's finished. Didn't Jesus say that on the cross? Didn't he say it's finished? Well, then how come we keep saying he's going to do something else? He's not going to do it. We're going to have to do it. We're going to have to open our mouth and speak God's word. And claim healing. Claim deliverance. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. So when Jesus walked up to that tree, faith was present. But the tree, listen to me, the tree could not respond until it heard the spoken word. Do you know why? I want to share with you why. When God created everything, how did he create things? With the spoken word. So when that tree was created, it was created with the word of God, with the words that God spoke. So that tree, along with every other innate object on this planet, will not respond to anything but the word. Amen. We need to get a hold of that because we're going to be start, We're going to begin in a few weeks talking about authority in your words. And I'm going to lay it all out to where you're never going to blame God for anything again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at this in Genesis chapter 1 real quick. Nothing happened with the tree until the tree heard Jesus speak. 
What did God do when he looked at the earth? I can tell you one thing. He didn't look at it and go, man, it sure is dark down there. (laughs) I can tell you this too. If he would have said that, it'd still be dark. Amen. Genesis chapter one says, uh, verse number two says, the earth was without form. Get a hold of this. Get a picture of this. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. Now look at this, what he says. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. How many of you know the spirit hovering over the waters did nothing? The spirit of God was there, wasn't it? Is that what it says? Genesis chapter one, verse two, isn't that what it says? That the spirit of God was there? The void and the waters and everything else says, so what? Okay, you're here. Get a picture of this, guys. The spirit was hovering over the face of the waters, but nothing happened until verse number three, when God opened his mouth and said, let there be be light. Nothing happened to the earth until God spoke the, the, or spoke the spoken word of his words. Nothing happened in the tree in, in Mark 11 until Jesus spoke to that tree and listen to nothing is going to happen in your life different than what you already have until you say something and speak something different than you're saying. That is a law of God that cannot be changed. I have counseled so many people when they start telling me about how bad their marriage is or how bad things are going in their life. And I'll say, what are you saying? And they'll tell me what they're saying. I say, and I'll tell them, and I think it goes in one ear and out the other. I know my mama used to tell me that. But uh, I, th- I think it goes in one ear and out the other when I tell them, until you change what you're saying, your world is not going to change. Thank you, sister. I thought I was going to turn back all the way to page one. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you... <laughs> Nothing's going to happen in your life until you speak. So, you can't tell God you're in faith if there are no corresponding words connected to what you're believing for. I'm going to say that again. You cannot tell God you're in faith if there are no corresponding words connected to what you're believing for. You know, the Lord revealed to me that so many Christians, good Christian people, Saved, going to heaven. Think just having faith alone will do the job. But he said, I didn't say that. People have said to me, Pastor, you said that I can have whatever I say. And I'll say, no, I didn't say that. I never said that to you. I said, uh, what God says, that you will have what you believe and say. You'll have what you believe and say. And I'm going to just add to that, out of the abundance of your heart is what's going to come out. And if you've got fear, doubt, and unbelief, if you've got troubles, if you've got negative things in your heart, that's what's going to come out on a regular basis. And you can't change that. That's why I can tell anybody, I can locate your faith five minutes after I sit down and talk to you about what comes out of your mouth. Don't shout me down now just because I'm preaching good. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Mark 11, 23, uh, 23, he said, for assuredly I say to you, whoever thinks about the mountain, whoever stands in front of the mountain and meditates on it. No, he said, for surely I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not what? Doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. Look at this. He will have 
whatever. Everybody say, whatever. whatever. He will have whatever he says. And you can put a slash and a, C beside, a she beside that too. Because he's no respecter of persons. So all you ladies, you're going to have what you say as well. Is that not what Jesus just told us? Amen. Jesus said you would, you would say your faith to the mountain. So if you're not saying anything, even though you have faith, your faith is not working. Can you see that? Listen, even the word of faith people, turn to your neighbor and say, now he's talking about you. We're word of faith church. Amen? Even the word of faith people, they'll all agree uh, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, that's just the way faith comes. That's just that religious spirit. Yeah, I know it, Pastor. But when it comes to the actual activation of their faith, their words aren't there. I told you I was going to come up on your porch today. We got to get a hold of this, guys. Their faith is not working for them. Their confession isn't there. They're not missing it in the believing part. They believe the word. What they're missing it is in the saying part. Amen. Jesus said you uh, have to speak to the mountain. So the question is, are you speaking to your mountain? Are you believing it should leave just because you have faith? Are you saying anything to your mountain? Are you saying anything over your marriage? Are you saying anything over your kids? Amen. I, 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 I'm just going to give this testimony. I praise God that my, my sweet daughter sitting in this audience today, and I'll tell you what, there was a time in my life when I, I spoke what I saw in her life, and I, the Lord corrected me on that and said, you are to say what I said about your daughter. And I said, I received that, Lord. I say she's saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and doing the work of the Lord. And that's where I left it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that you saved my daughter. And my son-in-law. He's here too. And my grandson. Praise God. I didn't say that. She did. She pointed all y'all out. Hallelujah. We have to speak the word. Are you actively speaking faith-filled words? Are you actively energizing your faith by your confession? Uh, you are the only one that can answer that. You know how you talk outside this building. Everybody in this building, oh yeah, praise God, man, I'm blessed, highly favored, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what do you do out there? Because out there is where you're creating your life. Amen. And I'm going to show you that in the scriptures. Or we've already seen part of it. Jesus didn't say just possessing faith would, be, would move your mountains. He said speaking to the mountain, then faith is what's going to move your mountain. For example, let's say a person has a medical condition. Let's say they have a problem with their heart or maybe their lungs or maybe their kidneys or diabetes or feet or toenail or whatever, whatever the problem may be. How do they know whether they are really in faith by what they are saying? You'll know whether a person's in faith by what they're saying. And remember, we release our faith with what? Our words. We receive our blessing how? With words. So if I get a report that I have a heart problem, then immediately I'm thanking God that 1 Peter 2.24 uh, says that by his stripes I was healed. So right now in the name of Jesus, healing belongs to me. I am healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for my healing. That's how we're to talk. Not, well, the doctor gave me a bad report. Be, just be praying that God might, if he feels like it, touch my body. If he has any time, I know he's busy. 
If he has any time for poor little old me, just y'all, y'all put me on your prayer list. Those are words of doubt and unbelief. Words like, I am healed. Not I'm going to be healed. Not God's going to heal me. He healed you when he took the stripes. Amen. Hallelujah. I speak over my heart. And I command it to function properly in Jesus' name. And then I say things like, I thank you, Father, that I'm healed. I am made whole. And from this day forward, I walk in divine health. That's one thing that God has told me to do. He said, I want you to claim every day that you walk in divine health. Then there's no need for a healing. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's just an example, my brother and sister, of speaking to the mountain in faith. And you and I can speak this way continually and ongoingly over every area of our life. Speaking faith-filled words over our marriage. Speaking faith-filled words over our families, our kids. Speaking faith-filled words over our job or our career and over our finances. My brothers and sisters, mountains do not move just because I say I have faith. They don't move because I go to a word faith church. Amen. They don't go, they don't move because I work in the ministry because I'm a pastor. Or the, the sound booth people, have, they work in the sound booth so automatically their faith is going to work. It don't work like that. That Jake and the, and the band up here, that their mountains are going to move just because they play a guitar or play the drums. Right. Or people working in a church, in a children's ministry. It don't work that way, guys. Amen. We get blessed for doing that. But those are gifts we give to God. Hallelujah. If we want our faith to work, we got to start saying something. You know, when I first started speaking God's word over my life, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't believe a word I said. Amen. I'm just being honest. You know why I did it? I did it because Jesus said to me. I did it because Brother Hagen said it worked for him. And I just knew in my heart, if it worked for him, it'll work for me. And, but mostly I did it because I'm just one of them old-fashioned people that believe the Bible is true. See, if people would just start believing the Bible is true, they'll start reading it more. They'll start studying it more. Amen. Basic instructions before leaving earth, guys. Get your Bible out, dust it off, and start reading it. Hallelujah. Now turn over to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. And I'm going to continue establishing this truth about what we say with another witness. The Bible says confirm every word with two or three witnesses. And this is a story where the disciples, if you remember, could not cast out a demon out of a person. And I'm not going to key in on exactly that, but I want to key in on what Jesus told them. And, and I've said this in man up and I'm going to say, I may have said it last two Sundays ago and I'm going to say it again this morning. When you read your Bible, do not get caught up in what you're seeing the miracles. Pay attention to what Jesus did and pay attention to what Jesus said. Amen. I had a, a, one of my mentors had a, actually an open vision in his life with Jesus Christ. And when he was given the testimony, everybody in the crowd, everybody in the congregation was saying, well, what did Jesus have on? What did his hair really look like? He said, I'm not interested in what he had on and what he, uh, how his hair looked. I'm interested in what he had to say. We need to get a little bit more interested in what God has to say. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're not going to concentrate on the, the whether they could or could not cast the devil out. We're going to concentrate on what Jesus said in regards to that situation. Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. It says, so Jesus said to them, 
Look at this. Because of your unbelief. Now, just let me just take a sidetrack here. Who was he talking to? He was talking to the disciples. Well, how you dare you tell me I don't have faith? No, I didn't say, he didn't say you didn't have faith. He said they did not believe the word. Because he had already told them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creation. In my name, you'll cast out devils. In my name, you'll speak with new tongues. In my name, you'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Hadn't he already told them that? He sent them out, right? Well, the first thing they did, they came back and said, well, we couldn't cast the devil out. Why? He says, because of your unbelief. You didn't believe what I told you. There are many Christians right now, yes, they're going to heaven, but they have pure hell going on in their life because of their unbelief. They don't believe God's word enough to get, put him first in their life. They don't believe God's word enough to get up every morning and pray. They don't, get up, they don't put God first enough to get up and read their Bible every day. It's called the daily word. How many of you know that? It's called daily bread. Hallelujah. And hey, I'm not being critical of those who are doing that. Let me tell you something. If you're saved, you're going to heaven. But then don't call me wanting counsel to know what can I do here? Well, I'm going to say, what are you doing? What can I do here? Well, you're doing the word. Well, no, but do you have another plan? No, I don't. Amen. If you're not being a doer of the word, there's no way I can help you. Because you know what I'm going to give you? I'm going to give you more word. But first I'm going to say, hey, do what I told you to do last time before you come back and ask me again. In the past, that's kept a lot of people from coming in for counseling. <laughs> Hallelujah. Guess what? You're getting counseled this morning. Not by me, but by the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, because of your unbelief, but for assuredly, that means, listen to me, this is a fact, Jack. I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say, not think, not meditate on, not try to hum and then touch your fingertips and make it come into existence. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing, everybody say nothing. nothing. Nothing will be impossible for you. Amen. Amen. What did he say to his disciples? He said, you would say to the mountain. Now look at Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 21. And this is Matthew's account of what Jesus said over in Mark chapter 11. Matthew 21, 21. Say amen when you're there. And again, of course, this is Jesus talking. If you've got a red letter Bible, this is all in red. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, underline that in your Bible, you will not only do what was done to that fig tree, but you will also say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and it will be done. Amen. That's the third witness. Once again, we are hearing Jesus tell us to say something to our mountains. Amen. What's the mountain in your life? Is it pain in your body? Is it sickness in your body? Is it a marital, marital mountain? Is it a mountain with dis disobedient kids? More importantly, what are you saying to that mountain? Well, pastor, I'm saying God's word over that my, my mountain, but, no, no but. Get your butt out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. Stay with it. Stick with it. If you're saying God's word, stick with it. Don't say but. It ain't happening yet. You just canceled your prayer. 
Can you see that? Because that's what you believed in your heart. You know why? Because you didn't see it. Jesus told Doubt and Thomas, he said, blessed are the people who believe and don't see. Amen? Keep standing on your confession, guys. Don't give up on it. Keep thanking God for the answer before you even see the answer. If you wait until you don't feel pain to speak that the pain is gone, then the pain's not going to leave. It eventually will. You can take enough drugs to get the pain to leave. I'm talking about taking a gospel. Amen. Notice Jesus said, if you have faith and do not doubt. So if a person tells me, he says, Pastor, you know, I'm confessing the word over my mountain, but nothing's happening then my first response to that person is they need to realize that they're canceling their confession of faith by saying words, nothing's happening. Can everybody see that? If you can't see that, we'll go back to page one and start over. We need to all get a hold of this, guys. Your spouse is not responsible for what you say. Your pastor is not responsible for what you say. You are. Amen. Don't shout me down now just because I'm preaching good. When they thought, when they ought to be saying, praise God, pastor, uh, I've confessed God's word over my mountain and even though I may not be seeing it right now, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that I, the mountain is moving. Sometimes mountains move so slow you can't see them, but that don't mean they're not moving. I've seen some of y'all drive where y'all can't hardly tell y'all are moving either but I don't honk. Amen. Just wait. Be patient. Amen. We have to be waiting patiently. And that's another whole sermon. Amen. But we have to speak the word. That will be the only thing that makes your mountain move. Amen. And listen, you'll only start doing this when you get an inward witness and an inward revelation of what I'm saying. Amen. When you get a revelation of what I'm saying to you today and what Jesus is saying to all of us today, you'll start watching what you say. You'll start watching your mouth. You'll not speak ill over your family. You'll not speak ill over your job. You'll not speak ill over anything. Amen. You'll speak the word of God. Or at least you'll be positive. Have you ever noticed why somebody's negative? They drag the whole group down. You can have, be having a, a positive party. You can have one person show up and start spilling all their dirty laundry and it's like, you ready to go? I'm tired of being here. Amen. We need to speak positive words. We need to speak life over our life. Can they get an amen to that? Hallelujah. All right. Go back to Mark chapter 11. (laughs) You thought we was done there, didn't you? Hallelujah. Mark chapter 11. Listen, I'm trying to get out of Mark 11. But there's so many nuggets in there. There's so much more we need to be doing. We need to learn. Can I get an amen? Amen. It's vitally important that we get a hold of the wisdom that Jesus is trying to tell us about. Actually, what he's demonstrating for us. See, this is how faith works. By the way, if you're putting a a title on my message, that's what it is, how faith works. Your faith won't work without you doing what I'm telling you. Now, pay attention to what Jesus says in verse 23 and 24. We'll start with 23. It says, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says, everybody say says. He didn't say whoever prays. He didn't say whoever begs. He didn't say whoever calls everybody on your contact list and get them to pray for you. Because really you may not really want some people praying for you because 
they pray things like, Father, if it be your will, heal them. If not, go ahead and let them die. Praying things like, Lord, your will be done. I mean, after all, you're in control of everything. You know, personally, when I hear people say that, you know what I think? God sure is a bad manager. When you look at what's going on in this world today and you say God's in control of that, my first thing is, are you stupid? I'm not trying to be ugly and mean. I'm just saying, come on, think about it. To say God's in control of all the hell that's happening all around the world right now? Really? Who would want to serve a God like that? Who would want to serve that God? I wouldn't. If he can't manage the world, I mean, he sure can't manage my life for me. But see, that God's not in control. He gave us authority. He put control in your hands. Debbie's in control of her life. Joe's in control of his life. Amen. He tells me Debbie's in control of his life, but she's not. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's healthy to laugh. Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> if God was in control, he sure has made a mess of things. Think about it. Just think about it. You'll, you'll quit saying that if you'll just think about it. Amen. See, no, God's not in control. We need to put away that kind of religious thinking. I told Miss Brenda I had to look up the word fodder. Because as, as, as soon as I read that, I thought, man, that's religious fodder. I want to make sure it wasn't that ugly word, so I, I looked it up. It's just something that's readily available. Words that are readily available is what we say. It's words we've been taught since we were a little kid. It's, it's that religious spirit that comes from people learning wrong things in different churches because the pastor said it and they never double checked it with the word of God. So they just walk around saying things that some other person has said in their life instead of saying what the Lord God has always said. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. That was good preaching right there. Listen, we need to put away things because, listen to this, God is sovereign. You can write this down. God is sovereign or in control where his word is believed. He's only in control of your life if you are confessing his word. Amen. And that's the truth. Look at what he says here in Mark uh, 11, 23 and 24. Again, he says, For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, that means because I just said what's in verse number 23, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, what? Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, the word them in most Bibles, and probably in yours too if it's in there, that word, that word is italicized. So that means those words, anytime you see a word that's italicized in your Bible, it means it was added by the writers to make people better understand things. So let's remove those two words and read it like the original text. Hallelujah. <clears throat> it says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have. Listen to me. Believe that you receive and you will have. So when, I, when do I believe I have? When do I believe what I pray? When do I believe what I pray? When I pray it or when I say it. Amen? Jesus believed that tree died at the moment he said it. But it didn't manifest until the next day. 
Now, amen. Our prayers manifest the moment we pray them. Well, I don't see it. So? So? My husband ain't changed, so? What did you just say? Guess what? He ain't ever going to change now. Because you just said my husband ain't changed. My wife ain't changed. Put the shoe on the other foot so the guys don't feel like they're alone. <laughs> Amen. Jesus said we are to believe we receive the moment we pray. Not later. Not in the sweet by and by. We believe that we receive right now. That's why it's called in 11, Hebrews 11, 1, now faith. It says now faith is. Not tomorrow's faith, not yesterday's faith, now faith. When I pray, I say, Father, I believe that I receive it right now. Say it with me. Say, Father, I believe that I receive right now. See, we release our faith with our confession and we receive by exercising our confession as well. I believe I receive now. Jesus spoke to a tree and believed the moment he spoke, uh, it happened. You know, some years back, uh, I like to bring things into real time. Some years back, my wife and I needed a financial miracle in our lives. Uh, we actually needed $2,000. I can't remember what it was for. It's not important. And I don't remember ever grabbing her hands and praying and, 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 and praying the uh, prayer of agreement or uh, anything like that. Uh, I just remember that uh, our attitude... And the words that came out of our mouth was God will supply. Simple. God will supply. Because you know why? Because Philippians 4.19 says it, he will. That God will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. See, that got down on the inside of here. Not up here. Word up here is not going to do you any good. Amen. Zero. We learned that two weeks ago. The word's got to get down in your heart. That's why your pastor keeps saying, read, study, do. Read, study, do. Read, study, do. Because until you do, do the word and you see an actual miracle happen in your life, you're not going to believe it. But the day you do it and you say it, you do it and it manifests, then you'll go, man, that really works. I'm going to do that more often. I mean, if you got any sense at all, you will. Amen. That's the way I did it. I had to do it the first time. Anyway, let me get back to my story. When, we, when the thought <clears throat> came of us needing that money came up, when the devil would bring it to our attention that well, you know, you're going to have to just call somebody. You're going to have to take a loan at the bank. You're going to have to do this. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to do all this. No, our attitude was no. Our God will supply. We didn't know how. We didn't care how. Right? Do you care how it happens? You just want it to happen, right? But listen, our God will supply. I don't remember ever fretting about it. I don't ever remember wondering where the money would come from. I just believe God's word. Well, the church was holding a raffle. The church we used to go to was holding a raffle. Many of you have heard this testimony, <clears throat> but praise God, you're going to hear it again this morning. Amen. Church was holding a raffle to raise money for missions. And one of the items that was being raffled off was a 1957, I know Jason will correct me on this if it's not true, a 1957 Ford Fairlane convertible. Red and white. That was Ford's favorite colors way back then. Red and white. Uh, you know, I needed money, but I didn't need to spend money. How many of you ever been there? 
I mean, you look at a check account, you know you need money, so you don't want to spend any money. And that raffle ticket, every ticket cost $100 a piece. And I want to tell you, back in the 1990s, $100 was a lot of money to me. Of course, that was before I learned a lot of what I know now, too. Amen? <clears throat> so it was $100. So in my mind, the devil was playing with my mind. He says, you can't afford that. What are you going to be wasting your money on gambling? You're going to buy you a raffle ticket? You know that's a sin to gamble. See, the devil will keep you any way he can from receiving. You know what I said? God shall supply. He has supplied. Amen? <clears throat> so the Wednesday night, don't let the devil rob you of your blessing with your mind. Somebody in here need to hear that. The night, the Wednesday night before the Saturday raffle, the Holy Ghost, he just impressed on me. I want to say he told me, but it wasn't a verbal voice. It was just that still small voice on the inside of us. But he told me to buy a ticket. That our financial miracle would come through that car. Listen. If God can meet a financial need by putting a coin in a fish's mouth, then he can meet my financial need and mine and Miss Brenda's financial need by putting $2,000 in a Ford Fairlane. And that was my attitude. Amen. So I bought a ticket. I even actually, when I was talking to uh, the pastor over there, uh, he said, well, Brother John, you, did you buy you a ticket to win that car? I said, not only did I buy a ticket for to win that car, I'm going to win that car, Pastor. He said, well, then that's a good attitude. I said, no. I'm, I said, and I was excited. I was excited on the inside of me. You know when I got excited? When the Holy Ghost told me to buy the ticket. That's right. <laughs> not when after I got the keys to the car. Listen to me now. We need to be excited the, the, the day we pray. So I got excited. And I said, Pastor, no, you don't understand. I'm going to win that car. Yeah. He said, okay, brother, I, 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 I can believe with you. I don't know if you believe with me or not. But the day of the raffle, I'm going to make this as short as possible. Even all my brothers are sitting around the table. I mean, we used to rag on each other like some of us being in here do. Yeah. They say, yeah, I'm going to win that car. I said, man, you wasted that hundred bucks. <laughs> I said, that car is mine. Oh, okay, Brother John, what makes you so special? I said, my daddy. My daddy. I said, I'm going to tell you guys right now. God told me I'm going to win that car. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, when they draw the number, glory to God. All the glory goes to him. When they called the number, it was Brother John. And Brother John went up and collected the keys or the ticket, keys to the car. Now, here's the, here's the extra blessing. He said, they said that we could sell the car back for $3,000. Our need was only $2,000. So we were blessed to sow $1,000 back into the, the missions. We only needed a $2,000. It wouldn't have been right for me to take three. Yeah. All you people pick up a wallet off the floor, it ain't right for you to keep it if there's a name on the inside of it. I don't know why I said that, but I did. Anyway, hallelujah, we received our blessing. <clears throat> hallelujah. It did, the, did the money come immediately? No. When we prayed or when I bought the ticket? The pastor, the pastor at that time said, well, here, I know you're going to win, so here, just take this $3,000. No. Did the money come? Yes. Why? Because our attitude and our confession never, ever, 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 ever faltered. The devil couldn't have beat us off our confession. Too many people give up on what they've already said before it happens. 
We believe God would supply our need. We confess God would supply our need. And because we held fast to our confession, God supplied our need. Can I get an amen? amen? You see, God is no respecter of persons. And he'll do the same thing for you. He'll do the same thing for anyone. Listen to me. Anyone who believes they receive when they pray. And not wait until they get it. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Isn't that what Jesus said? He said, you'll have what you say and believe. Look at this again in Mark 11, 24. He says, therefore, I say to you. Now, here's what I want you to do. If you have your Bible, put your name there. Put your name there. I say to Jason, I say to Sarah, I say to Susan, I say to Brenda, I say to Joe, Debbie, Christy, Leverett, Daniel. Put your name there. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have. Got one amen. You know what amen means? He's talking to me. Amen. He's saying you believe that you receive the moment you pray. And I'll tell you, when I began getting a hold of this truth years ago, I started changing the words that came out of my mouth. I started changing my confession. I no longer thought it was cool to say I'm so broke I can't pay attention. When people say, well, where are you going to get the money? I say, well, my daddy owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. I've said this before. When I got a bill coming in, I just, here you go, Dad, you got mail. Amen. Trusting him for everything. Amen. Praise God. Boy, I'm preaching myself happy. Listen to me. The work of faith begins with what we say. The work of faith begins what, with what we say. And like I said, most Christians aren't missing it in the, the believing part. They're missing it in what they're saying. Are you with me? Now, look over here. Uh-oh, where'd my time go? Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Got plenty of time, Pastor. I got two people to say that. Let's look over here in 1 Timothy. We're almost done. Stay with me. This is very, very important, guys. I'm telling you, if you'll get a hold of this teaching, it's going to revolutionize your life. Amen. 1 Timothy, is that, did I tell you that? 1 Timothy chapter number 6. Everybody tell your neighbor, praise God, we're finally out of Mark 11. Oh. <laughs> Whoo! 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Notice it says, fight the good fight of faith. Listen to me. He's not talking about fighting with the devil. How many of you know why? The devil is already defeated. So you don't have to battle the devil. People need to quit giving the devil credit for everything. Well, the devil's doing this and the devil's doing that. Really? How'd he get out from underneath your foot? You must have let him out just to see if he could do, still do something for you, against you. Watch what we say. He's defeated. The fight is to keep yourself in faith and not to waver in your confession. I say keep yourself in faith by not wavering in your confession. Even when things don't look like they're changing. That's where the fight is, my brothers and sisters. Keeping yourself in faith. Keeping yourself trusting God and trusting in His Word. Keeping yourself holding fast to your confession, no matter what the enemy brings your way. Listen to me. Satan's job is to get you out of faith. 
He wants to get you over into doubt and unbelief, worry, fear. But the only way he can do that is through your words. The devil has no power over a Christian. Period. If the devil is working in your life, then it's because you put him there. I won't let that sink in. Amen. You put him there by saying negative things. You put, you put him there by saying the things he puts in your head about your life, about your husband, about your wife, about your kids. Years ago, I didn't let the devil put uh, in my head what I saw in my daughter. Yes, I wanted to, but I didn't open my mouth and say it. I said, she's saved, filled with the Holy Ghost and doing the work of the Lord. Get thee behind me, Satan. You will not have my daughter. You won't have my son. You won't have my grandsons. Now you won't have my great-grandson. Because I'm not going to allow it. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, I'm preaching me happy. We got to stay in faith, guys. So, the good fight of faith is simply, listen to me, controlling your confession. Keeping your words positive. Keeping your words life-giving. Speaking life over you and your family. Can I get an amen? All right, Proverbs chapter 13, and then we're going to close. Proverbs chapter 13, verse number three. This is so important. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. I'm going to say that again. He or she who guards their mouth preserves their life. But he or she who opens their mouth wide shall live or have destruction. I like what the Message Bible says. It says, careful words make for a careful life. Careful words make for a careful life. Careless talk may ruin everything. My brothers and sisters, you and I must learn to guard over our mouths. You and I must learn to only speak words we want to be manifest in our lives. Why? Because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, Jason, uh, because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, said whatever we believe in our heart, whether it be good or whether it be bad, Whatever we believe in our heart and say with our mouth is what we will have. Amen. How does our faith work? It works through our confession. Can I get an amen to that? And of course, we're going to talk about that more next week. Let's stand to our feet. Praise God. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of today? Am I the only one that has, that there's, there's this jumping in your spirit? God, I'm glad you told me that today. Amen. 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 Everybody say this with me. Father, Father thank, you message. thank you for your message. Thank you that you've talked to me today. And you've told me, Father, that I need to watch my mouth. So from this day forward, I will think before I say. And I will confess your word over my life, over my family's life, over the life of the church, over the life of all of my friends, and I'll confess your word until I see it manifest. And then I'm going to thank you for it in Jesus' name. Matter of fact, he just, uh, he just corrected me. He said, no, thank me for it every day. And then it will manifest. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering this morning. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Bless God Almighty. We never close down a service without giving everyone an opportunity uh, to give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, many people think going to church saves them. But going to church, 
doesn't make you a Christian no more than going to Whataburger makes you a good cheeseburger. You have to be born again. You have to be born again. Nicodemus went to Jesus by night and he said, what must I do? He said, hey, you have to be born again. You know what being born again means? It means old things in your life have passed away. You don't act the same way. You don't live the same way. That's what being born again means. How many of you ever seen a, a child sin? Anybody in here ever seen a child commit a sin? I mean a child, baby. You ever seen a child sin? Oh, okay, I thought. <laughs> When you get born again, you know what? <laughs> You're a baby. You're a baby. You're a baby in Christ. That's not a bad word, guys. I like getting born again. I like being my mama's baby. I like being Jesus' baby. But when you get born again, things change in your life. And if things ain't changing in your life, you're not born again. After a while. I'm not talking about immediately. The only thing that gets immediate change is your spirit. And then your spirit won't let you do those things you used to do. Has anybody in here ever experienced that but me? See, I couldn't do the same things in my life once I got born again. There was just something on the inside of me called the Holy Ghost that kept me from sinning. And I used to be the best sinner that ever walked the planet. My daughter could probably testify to that too. No, I'm glad she didn't say amen. I'd have to go down there. <laughs> but listen, we want to give everyone an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as not only their Savior, but as the Lord of their life. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around. Don't look at the person to your left or right. This is between you and God. If you're in this room right now, you're watching by live stream, and you want to dedicate your life. You want to just tell the Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. If that's you, I want you to raise a hand and put it right back down. God sees all those hands. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to give uh, about five more seconds to the double-minded. If you want to receive Christ as your Savior this morning, because you may not walk out of here today and, and live to see tomorrow. And eternity is a long time. If you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, one more opportunity, raise a hand and put it right back down. Lord sees those hands. Praise God. Every head raised and every eye open. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son, that He died for me and He rose again. And because He did, when I accept Him, I can live again. I want to live in eternity with you, Father, and with the Lord. Therefore, I confess out of my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. In his precious name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, every one of you. God bless those by live stream that raised your hand this morning. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. But let me share something with you. The devil's going to try to rob you of that. He's going to meet you. Some of you in here, he's going to meet you right outside them doors. And he's going to tell you, ah, that, what that preacher said ain't true. Don't let him rob you. Hold fast to your confession. If you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, you are saved. Amen. But you've got, to keep your, you've got to keep your salvation by living for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Last thing we always say is we serve a miracle working God and you, everybody point to your neighbor, and you are the next in line for your miracle. In Jesus' name, you're dismissed.